What's up everybody, it's Be The Installer. I'm here to give you the best settings and features of the Sony 83 inch A90J. Now I did an unboxing video that was pretty popular so definitely check that out as well as an installation where I put the 83 inch here behind me with an A8H from Sony and a Vizio OLED and the PS5 and the X-Series X so check both those videos out. But today it's all about settings and features, so let's get into that. Before we get too far into it, make sure to smash the like button and definitely consider subscribing and ring the notification bell in order to be notified when I upload the next video or when we go live. And I'm gonna go over the settings first and then get into the best three features of the Sony A90J that I would consider better than any other TV on the market. But first we gotta go over the settings for SDR and HDR, then I'll give you them for Dolby Vision and then for gaming. So don't worry, for these settings, I'm gonna go over them pretty quickly and make it pretty straightforward. But if you disagree with any of the settings, let me know in the comments below. First I'm gonna start out with SDR and custom mode and then go into HDR and custom mode and kinda of give you just the very subtle differences that I use. So the first one I'm gonna go over is the SDR and this is just YouTube, which is an SDR right here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the picture settings, and as I had said, I use custom mode. So, gonna skip over the ambient light sensor. I currently have it off. Now, if you set everything to max and brighten it up, and then it's dark, you can always turn the ambient light sensor on, and it'll adjust for the room brightness. Uh, once I get through that, I get to the brightness here, where, of course, I'm gonna have the regular brightness set to max, gonna have the contrast left at 90, the gamma comes at negative two. Um, we typically set that at zero or negative one. I like having it lower because the Sony has really good shadow detail, so lowering it to negative one actually looks great. So after the gamma, now we have black level set to 50 where we leave that. Uh, the black adjust left off. The advanced contrast enhancer left off, and I'm gonna explain that in a second. And then the peak luminance, actually, I set to high, of course, because you want to get a lot of brightness out of it. And the color, I always leave it to expert one. So in any instance, in any of these, I leave it on expert one. And the live color, now that's something interesting. If you actually want to juice the TV up a bit, you know, you can crank it up, you know, to any of the settings and it'll give you more color, kind of artificial color, not reference. But, uh, you know, it's nice for some content. So that's kind of left to where you want it. I typically leave it off. Then in clarity, uh, the sharpness is left at 50, and then the re reality creation and some of the other settings like the noise reduction left off. But in SDR, you're gonna get a lot of poor content. So you start messing with some of these things and it can make it worse. And then after the reality creation, you have a couple different noise reductions. Uh, this one says, you know, no, random noise reduction is kind of like the spotty images if it's in a darker area. And the digital noise reduction says, you know, it's seen around letters and compression noise such as block noise. That's a good thing about Sony's. It pretty much explains all the different settings so you can tweak them as needed. But if you're watching SDR content like me, most of the time it's like older movies. And if it's older movies, they normally look pretty poor on some of these OLED. So I typically do raise this up to kind of in the medium area for both of these. And the same with smooth gradation. You get a little better picture quality if you raise these up. Um, and it's definitely necessary to raise these up if you go back to something like the advanced contrast enhancer. So if you want it to look even punchier and you turn this up to medium or high, what's gonna happen is it kind of degrades the picture a little bit. Same with the black adjust. So if you're messing around with these settings to get it super punchy, super bright, then what's gonna happen is you'll definitely see more noise, specifically in SDR or like 1080i content, where then you're gonna have to upscale and therefore you're gonna have to go back down into these uh, noise reductions and kind of tweak those to make it reduce the noise that you've created by adding that artificial brightening. And last but not least, we have motion. And that's pretty confusing even to me, so I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can. But we have two different kinds of issues with motion interpolation. One is stutter and one is judder. So stutter refers to when a picture looks uniformly unsmooth or smooth. So if the picture is just panning and it's uniformly looking choppy, that's where you add some smoothness here in order to make it less choppy. So if you have a movie or you're watching something and you notice panning shots moving in a uniform direction, you can move this smoothness bar from min up to one, two, or three to make it smoother. I prefer one or two where it's not so much the soap opera effect, but it's not so much of the stutter. And that's kind of a happy medium, but you know, that's to be put where you like that. And then the clearness refers to 
putting a black frame in between each frame. So when you're watching it, it's going back and forth between the content you're watching and a black frame very fast. And if that's at minimum, it's okay. If you move it up to one, it does make it slightly darker. If you move it up to two, it makes it noticeably darker. And for me, if you move it up to two or three, I get that flickering and it kind of makes me get a headache. So I really don't like to mess with it. And I'll just leave clearness completely off all the time. And then Cinemotion is the last form of motion interpolation. As you can see, it says it detects the video of movies and other content and optimizes picture quality using IP or interlaced progressive conversion and frame interpolation. Basically what this means is it's irregular judder. So things that are kind of moving, not in a uniform manner, this helps make sure that you're getting the correct frame rate. And so there's a couple different ways to set this up, but from what I've gathered and from what people have told me, people like Alex at ratings.com and Keep It Classy Tech and Ingition AV is basically what you wanna do if you're watching content that has interlace like this, is you wanna keep the Cinemotion high, but you wanna make sure that your motion flow smoothness is set to minimum. And so those two work together in order to give you the best picture quality. So that's about as good as I can explain motion interpolation, so I hope it helps. If not, again, let me know in the comments and maybe we can clear it up. But let's move on to HDR real quickly because like I had said, there's only a couple things that I change. All right, so now I have this in HDR, and as you can see, super bright. So now I'm gonna go back in the settings real quick and show you what changes. So the first thing that changes is it says HDR in the top right corner, so you know you're in HDR. And then I'm gonna bounce down back to the brightness settings, and again, I'm gonna leave it at max, leave the contrast at 90, gamma at zero, and now you have an option for HDR tone mapping. And you can either do brightness preferred or gradation preferred. Gradation preferred makes it look more accurate, makes it look better. If you wanna get a little bit more juice, you can change it to brightness preferred, but I don't think it makes a big difference when you're watching it in regular HDR. When you're watching Dolby Vision, there's even a larger gap. Again, black level on 50, uh, black adjust, again, this was set from when we had on SDR, that back to zero. Contrast enhancer, again, you can jack it up if you wanna have a little bit more punch, but I'm gonna leave it off. Peak luminance high. Again, color set to expert one. Again, live color, I have it on off, but if you want a little bit more juice, a little bit more like a, a Samsung look, you can crank it up and get a little artificial color on it. Again, clarity, now I would leave this to 50, and again, the reality creation, I'm good with auto or off either way. Um, and then down in the random noise reduction and digital noise reduction, definitely keep that off because if you're watching HDR content, you're not gonna need it to artificially help with noise reduction because it's already a very good picture quality. Smooth gradation, again, you can leave it off, low or medium. I typically don't put it on high. So those, not a huge deal, but it does give you a little bit smoother image if you add a little bit of that in, even with HDR, to be honest. And then in the motion again, smoothness, I actually set to two because I like to have a little bit smoother image. You can leave it off. This is more of a personal preference. Clearness again, off. And then Cinemotion can be left to high or off. It's not gonna be doing anything unless it has to. So leave it to high if you'd like, not a big deal. I'll let this play out and you can see, this has an amazing picture. Uh, it looks amazing in HDR, so really like how this looks. Again, this is with gradation preferred and the tone mapping, and it just has a ton of detail. So incredible picture. So let's move on to Dolby Vision real quick. All right, so now we have Dolby Vision on. This is Luca from Disney Plus, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the picture settings again. Now you can see it's on Dolby Vision Bright. That's my preferred mode. The Dolby Vision Dark's a little darker, and it's not quite as much detail, but people say that it's more accurate. So. Whichever you prefer, uh, the Vivid is a little bit too wacky for me in all content, really, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But Dolby Vision Bright is a good sweet spot for me. And then, so we get down to some of these things in the brightness and it's kind of maxed out. So now we have brightness maxed, contrast max. You can reduce it if you like a bit. Doesn't make a huge difference. And then the gamma, again, it's set to zero. I can move it down to negative two. There is a couple different ways to get um, more detail, again, this is just the mid-tones anyway, so it's not gonna make the brightest areas bright or the darkest areas dark, it's just quarter of the mid-tones. So then we get down to HDR tone mapping, and Dolby Vision has its own tone mapping, so really it could be left off, but gradation preferred is typically the more accurate mode, but I prefer using brightness preferred, if at all, because it really helps the TV shine. Again, black level left at 50. Now, in this instance, black adjust and advanced contrast enhance can be used to make it a little bit brighter. The black adjust doesn't really do a whole lot, but the contrast enhancer does. So if you crank that up, you see it, it adds a lot of brightness. 
but it does add the digital noise. So then you have to start messing with different settings. So if you just leave that off and then peak luminance to high, you're in a pretty good place. Color again, expert two, sharpness at 50, and then reality creation. Again, I'm gonna leave it off because it's supposed to be such a good signal. Why would you need artificial intelligence to help you out in that situation? And then with the random noise reduction, digital noise reduction, if you've left the enhance contrast off and the adjust, the black adjust off, then you really don't need these as well because it's such a high quality picture. Same with gradation, but you can get a little bit less of the banding if you keep it higher or medium. So you can mess around with that. And again, same with before on HDR, the motion flow, it's a personal preference on the smoothness. I prefer it to most of the time one, if you know it's a little bit too soap opera effect, I'll move it down to one. Clearness min and then Cinemotion on high. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and check out the game mode now. All right, now last but not least is game mode. Um, you know, I wanted to check and see if the Xbox Series X actually kicks this into game mode. It does not. If you have a PS5, it'll automatically change to game mode. So with the X Series X, I actually have to go in and change it to game mode. Uh, and it goes through and does a bit of processing to get there. When you get into game mode, you wanna make sure that the input is also set to the proper input. So I'm gonna go ahead into actual settings Go into the channel input here and down to external inputs and to HDMI signal format and it's plugged into HDMI 4. So make sure that that's set to enhanced format. Now if you want to have Dolby Vision enhanced format you can do that but that doesn't do 4K at 120. So right now enhanced format, 4K at 120, 4K HDR. So we're going to click on that and then exit out of this and now we'll be able to have HDR and 4K at 120 in game mode and the picture settings are as such. Let's go into that. Um, I have it on a video just because I wanted to make sure I was on something. And here we are again. I want to get past all this to brightness. Brightness is on max. Contrast is on 90. Gamma again set at zero. You can tone it up or down a little bit depending on what you like. Um, the tone mapping is on gradation preferred automatically here. Black level 50. Black adjust I would leave off. Contrast enhance again if you want a little bit more punch you can leave that up. Um, really not necessary with this TV. It's pretty bright as it is. Peak luminance set to high. Again, color is at expert one. If you wanna change that, feel free. Live color, you really, with gaming, you know, you can pump it up a bit if you'd like. Uh, and then clarity, most of these settings are all off. Um, I would leave the reality creation off. The random noise reduction, digital noise reduction all off. Smooth gradation off. Motion interpolation is all again off and I wouldn't mess with it. To reduce the input lag, you wanna leave all those settings off so it doesn't have to do as much processing and that's not good for gaming. Sony's not the fastest as it is. Not that it's really noticeable, but if you have an LG, you know, you're gonna be quicker already. So for the Sony's, just leave all that stuff off and you're gonna have pretty low input lag. So now that I've gone over all the settings, I'm gonna give you my three favorite things about this 83 inch A90J that aren't just the giant TV and how bright it is. So. First, I'm gonna to go to my son, who's gonna talk about his favorite thing, the remote. This one, it's okay, but it's black, so like, if it's like dark and you're watching a movie, like, you can't see it. And like, the buttons don't do anything. But this one is shiny and it glows in the dark. Wanna see? See, look how cool it looks. Thanks, Jacoby. Kids just have a way with words, right? The second thing that I love about this TV is that it has fantastic speakers. And I'm talking like really good speakers, whether it's on a stand or it's on the wall like this. So for the most part, if you get a TV in 2021, you're gonna have an issue when it's on the wall because the speakers will either be on the back of the TV or they'll be firing downward. So the fact that this has that acoustic vibrating panel and it comes out at you with the subwoofers behind vibrating, it has a really good system. And not just the fact that the speakers themselves are good, but you can also set up an audio system to use this TV as the center channel. And a lot of different people have used a Master Series OLED as a center channel before, like Techno Dad, Ninjitian AV, and have said it sounds great. I'm hoping to do that as well, because to be honest, the TV is so big, there really isn't a ton of room to put a center channel here unless you put it up in the ceiling. So to have two tower speakers and then use the TV as a center channel is very appealing to me. And the third and final thing is the heat sink. And I can't really show you that, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But the A90J is the only TV that actually has a heat sink in the US. 
and it actually allows the TV to be pushed harder. And that's noticeable, especially in the small highlights. It's still an OLED TV, so when you're talking about full screen brightness, it's not gonna be as bright as a bright LED TV, but if you're able to control the light in your room in, in any manner, this OLED TV with its infinite contrast and then the ability to have those very small specular highlights just shine through the TV, it's quite remarkable. And so that heat sink, keeping the panel a little bit cooler, fantastic. One thing I'm probably gonna get a lot of questions about is calibration. And that's technically settings and features because the fact that this is a Master Series OLED is a good feature. Probably better than the remote to be honest. But my A90J and A80J both were very accurate out of the box. And most people don't get their TVs calibrated. So probably wouldn't put it in the top three. How it relates to being a setting, well, one TV could be different than the next and different than the next with regards to its accuracy. So for someone to give you their settings, it may not work across the board. So that's not gonna be listed in my settings, and also I don't deem it one of the top three features of this A90J. So that's all I have for you on this video. I am gonna do a video comparing this to the 77 inch TV, the A80J from Sony, and also to compare this against the 83 inch C1 to see which one of those TVs is a better buy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, make sure to comment on what you think are the best settings, if I made any mistakes, or if there's a better feature about this TV that you like. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe and set the notification bell to all so you're notified when I make my next upload or when we go live. And just like that, you can be the installer. Thank <laughs> you.